Welcome to my YouTube channel where we demonstrate and discuss everything related to theatrical and entertainment production crafts. Please subscribe to get the latest updates, posts, and demonstrations. While I will focus primarily on safety in the shops and comprehensive training and operating procedures for tools and machinery, I'll also demonstrate and discuss practical applications like flat and platform construction, scene painting, and more. If you'd like to see something specific, please let me know in the comments. Once again, please subscribe and power up the alert bell to get the most up-to-date notifications about new content. Let's say we need to put in a leg, but we want it to be more secure. You have the option of drilling and bolting. Not everyone's favorite task. A two by four going into a two by four. What bolt should I use? I'm going to say you should always use a 3 8 inch diameter bolt. Whether that's a carriage bolt or whether that's a machine bolt, you decide which it is that you want to use but it should be a 3 8 inch bolt. The quarter inch bolts and the 5 16 bolts just aren't going to have the strength that you need as that bolting point. So anytime you're bolting from a two by four into a two by four, two by four into a four by four, you probably need to use a 3 8 inch bolt, especially if it's getting to be a high platform. Now, if we use the 3 8 inch bolt, that means that our, we're gonna put a washer here and that bolt is going to stick out a little bit. And if that's okay, then just live with that and the bolt sticks out. Unless you're trying to secure platforms together, in which case you're going to have to countersink that head. And we'll do all of the variations. We won't do, I'll do them right here in a line just to give you some options. But you know, we're always gonna try to be putting it into the corner and giving that, getting that extra stability with the corners. But you can put a leg in anywhere. You don't have to put it in the corner. You can put a leg here. You can put a leg wherever you need. Uh, how many legs should you have? A four foot by four foot platform normally needs four legs. Four by eight platform normally needs six legs. If you use that as a reference point and build off of there, then add more legs where you need them because of extra support or uh, to compensate for cantilevers and things like that. We're going to do a machine bolt, we're going to do a carriage bolt, and we're going to do a countersunk machine bolt. We have the option of doing two machine bolts, and that's going to be our strongest option. I'm gonna mark this here so we have some guidelines. Again, if we put one machine bolt here and one machine bolt there, that's gonna stabilize it in this direction. If we just do one machine bolt in the middle, that's going to bolt it together, but it's gonna have some play. But the two machine bolts, two by four to two by four frame is going to be our strongest connection. Again, you choose which ones you need to use for your particular application and what your shot prefers, but the two is going to be the strongest. We'll do a couple of others. get all my tools and supplies. All right, let's do this. Let's do the ideal one, the best one first. Two machine bolts with no countersink and it will do the countersink on the solo one, but you can apply the countersink to the same principle. I'm going to clamp this in place because I need to drill through both pieces at once. I'm going to clamp it, but I'm not going to clamp it this way because when I'm drilling this way now, my drill is in the way of this. I slip, I jam my hand into that. It hurts, I jam my face into it, whatever. We don't wanna do that. So let's turn this around and put our clamp here. If you're not a big fan of the Irwin quick grips, you can get a bar clamp uh, and use a bar clamp instead. I actually prefer the bar clamps. I feel like I can get them tighter. I, I just, this squeezing action, you can only get so tight 
depending on how strong your hand grip is. Got my 3 8 inch drill bit. This looks like it might be a dull drill bit. I hope it's okay. It's the only 3 8 inch drill bit I've got. I'm going to clamp my platform to the table. If my drill bit wasn't so dull, it should drill a lot better than that, but it seems that the only 3 8 inch drill bit I have right now is this dull piece of crap. I have to drill in and back out, let some of my chips fall out. Let some of those chips fall out. Let's try it with this guy. I'm gonna drill this with a highlight hole. And then come back with the gates. It's always an option too. And it drills a little bit easier that way. I brought three and a half inch bolts. I'm not, wasn't sure if three and a half is gonna work with the washers, but it is. It's been a long time since I've done this. I don't really bolt. I, I do everything I can not to have to bolt things together like this because it's a lot of extra work, but it is your stronger connection. Put a washer on there. Feed it through, tap it through with a hammer. Put a washer and a nut on the other side. I'm going to do the three and a half inch one. Well, that was the three and a half. I'm going to do the four inch one over here. These washers are a little extra thick. For some reason they're not extra, extra thick washers. Let me get the regular size ones. Don't know why we got extra thick washers. The four inch bolt gives me a little bit more leeway, but at a certain point, my bolt runs out of threads. So I have to keep that in mind. Now I need to tighten down my bolts. This is a 3 8 inch bolt. So I need to use a 9 16 inch ratchet or box wrench, but I'm gonna use that a ratchet. I usually do it until I start to sink this washer down into the wood a little bit. But you can see now that's kind of proud and that's going to be problematic if I'm trying to butt two platforms up together. So it's not going to work without the countersinking. But it's a pretty stable leg. I don't even need any cross bracing, probably up to three, four feet. I don't need any cross bracing because I'm not going to get any flex with that. So it's one of your stronger joints, but more work. difference between a machine bolt and a carriage bolt. The carriage bolt is designed to have that square part bite into your wood and keep the bolt from spinning. Now anyone who's used carriage bolts know that that is only as good until you over tighten the bolt and then that spins out and it makes a circle with nothing to grab onto. So I couldn't even find a three and a half inch carriage bolt in stock. I could find one four inch carriage bolt and a bunch of three inches. We don't use carriage bolts here. I stopped using them years ago because they are frustrating as heck to get out when they get stripped out and they get stripped out a lot. And once they get stripped out, you can't reuse the hole. When I drill my holes for the bolts, I can reuse those holes until forever practically. So this goes in and it goes in and it's sitting proud here, but I need to hammer. That flush, no washer on that side. 
Now it's important when you're hammering bolts, only ever hammer the head. If I hammer this end, I'm going to ding up those threads and then I'm never going to be able to thread on a nut. And that's especially important with the carriage bolts because if those carriage bolt end threads get stripped out, I'm gonna to try to put this nut on on the other side and it's gonna cause the bolt to spin because the threads are damaged. That is one of the common things in theater where rookie carpenters will hammer out the metal bolts with a metal hammer and mess them up and then you go try to use them or you try to take them out and you can't get them out. They just spin, spin, spin and you're frustrated. We're not gonna do that. This one's a little bit damaged. Blech. I'm a little bit leery to use this, but we're gonna find out what happens. Okay, I passed it. Okay. Those threads on the end were kind of damaged. So I usually then tighten this down, but your overzealous stagehands will just keep tightening and tightening and tightening, but I try to get it again to sink a little bit below the surface. But as you can see, even with this, we're still, this round head is still proud and it's not going to allow us to butt up two platforms together. And that can be a problem. So we really need to do the countersink. I need to have a paddle bit or spade bit or some other bore bit that is wider than my washer because I need to countersink below that and I need to countersink enough to get through the thickness of that head and that washer and get it below the surface. I like to start with my spade bit because that gives me a, a position to guide from. If I drill the other hole first and then I try to do this spade bit, it will wobble around in the bigger hole and uh, be a lot more inaccurate. So I like to do the spade bit first. Probably enough, and then when I compress it, it'll flush up. All right, now that I've got that there, I've got a pilot hole. That makes drilling that really easy. And then drill my 3 8 inch. Now, while I was able to use the three and a half inch bolt here and just barely make it work. And the four inch bolt was better because I'm countersunk here. I'm definitely gonna be able to do the three and a half inch bolt. That goes there. Got a whole lot more space on the back here. And When you're tightening a bolt, I've said this before in other videos, but always tighten the nut and hold the head of the screw or the bolt. Never hold the nut and tighten the head. Machine bolts and machine screws are designed to be tightened by the nut. You hold the head of the bolt or the screw, but you tighten the nut and you loosen the nut. It's because when you've got that nut under pressure, as the nut tightens down, it compresses into the material. And while that nut is tightening and held down in place, if you try to loosen up the head, that compression never gets released. And because that compression never gets released, it's real easy to break bolts, it's real easy to break your ratchets, especially if your nut has a flange on it and has those little spiky teeth grabbing into metal. One of those lock nuts, the kind of nuts that have a the washer with the little ridges that grip into the metal surface. It's real easy to damage tools and damage bolts, and you're just gonna fight. So loosen the nut or tighten the nut, hold the head. All right, so you can see these two, well, they're not moving that much, but they do have a little more play than this one. So these are three different ways you can bolt your two by four legs to your two by four platforms. 
You can also double carriage bolt on a diagonal just like you've done here. That's also okay. You can also countersink your carriage bolt to get that a little bit below the surface. But be careful with your countersinking because you might inadvertently widen that area where that carriage needs to grip. I don't like carriage bolts. I refuse to use them. I have a small stock of carriage bolts in the shop that I inherited. They just sit there and they never get used. They're just not the most, uh, they're not the go-to tool for virtually anything. Three, actually four more ways to bolt your two by four leg to your platform. Single bolt and lots of cross bracing, double bolt or double carriage bolt. That's four ways. We can do the same thing here with a four by four. If I need to use a four by four, I can do the same exact thing. It's just now I'm drilling through uh, the two by four and the four by four and I need a much longer bolt. I think you're gonna be happier with your four by four being bolted than screwed, but you can screw it. Methods for bolting legs to two by four framed platforms. Three techniques were demonstrated in this video. Leg number one demonstrated using two 3 8 inch machine bolts, washers on both ends and a nut on the inside. Leg number two demonstrated one 3 8 inch carriage bolt with one nut and one washer on the inside. Number three demonstrated one 3 8 inch machine bolt countersunk on the outside so that the platforms could be flush with a washer on the outside and a washer and a nut on the inside. All of these demonstrated techniques can be combined in various permutations to achieve several other legging options. Leg number four would be 3 8 inch machine bolts, one bolt only, not countersunk. Leg number five is 3 8 inch machine bolts, two bolts, both countersunk. Number six is 3 8 inch carriage bolts using two bolts. Number seven is 3 8 inch carriage bolt, only one bolt and countersunk. Number eight is 3 8 inch carriage bolts using two bolts and both of them are countersunk. Number nine would be using 3 8 inch self countersinking machine screws using one machine screw. And number 10 would be 3 8 inch self countersinking machine screws using two machine screws. Leg options 11 through 20 would be repeating all of those possible permutations while using a 4 x 4 and using 5 and a half inch bolts. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time with more technical theater content.